I think it's essential to move to the intimacy engine because intimacy is at the core of being a solutions business. I've often heard the McMahon and Ransford guys say client relationships last forever. And to do that across a large organization, you need a framework and an approach that allows you to think about and manage intimacy with clients over time. I've had the opportunity over the last several years at GE to work both as the sales leader for our solutions business and now as a principal in our solutions business developing and delivering the offers. Being on both sides of that and frankly being in it for four or five years has given me the perspective to understand the nuance and complexity and the difficulty of making that transition. Uh, it's not trivial, it takes time, and it takes a, a whole range of perspectives and understanding to do it. Two things I'd offer to people starting this journey. The first is that being a solutions business is fundamentally different than being a product or services company and it's more different than most people think and frankly it was much more different than I thought it was up front and I think it's critical to recognize that. And two is that making the transition takes a very long time as you change the behavior of dozens and then hundreds of people. So as we think about evaluating leaders, it's sometimes most effective to evaluate them on what they're learning more than on any one or two actions that they're taking at a tactical level. I've enjoyed working with McMahon and Ransford a great deal. They've taken a number of companies through this transition, and so they have great perspective on what it takes to make the transition, and Dean and his team provide excellent coaching in that. And I think that's made more powerful because they are a solutions business themselves. So as you try to make the change, they're not just coaching you on how to be a solutions business, but you observe them performing and behaving as a solutions business themselves. I lead a business that works on two things. Patient safety, how do we understand and reduce the incidence of patient harm? You may or may not know that medical error in hospitals is the sixth leading cause of death in the United States, and we think we can help. And patient care capacity management, or how do we help hospitals safely operate at high occupancy? That's critical as we talk about creating access for more patients coming into the system, and as we work to control and reduce the costs in the U.S. healthcare system.